Welcome back. You know, one of the best parts of being on television is becoming a part of your lives. I know that when you're watching WGAL, just like me, you rely on the news, but we've always offered more. And over the years, you were lucky enough to be introduced to some incredible people and taken to some extraordinary places. I guess I was nine months into the job when Nelson Sears came to me and he said, we're interested in buying a nationally syndicated show called PM Magazine and we would like you to audition as the co-host. Channel 8 got the show. It was a syndicated show, but they got the show and I don't know that anybody else in the market could have given it the same kind of uh, credence and, and support. We had a good team of people, we had great videographers, we had who were also producers and and we all wrote, and the, the station really wanted to make sure that we had a good product on the air. And they committed to it, and I, I think it showed. Hello, I'm Kim Lemon. And I'm Josh Hooper. We know you're used to seeing us weeknights at 7.30 on PM Magazine here on WGAL-TV8, but we wanted to take this time to let you know that PM Magazine is on the move. That's right, PM Magazine is your show, and we travel all over the Susquehanna Valley to bring you the freshest, most revealing stories from right here in your backyard. We were just out in communities from Adams County to Lebanon County to all over the area that Channel 8 broadcast to, and, and the station really made a commitment to getting out in all the different areas. We went to Greece, Israel, Turkey, Egypt, Brazil, Finland, Hong Kong. We would literally brainstorm in the offices of PM Magazine and say, where would you like to go? What would you like to see? What do you want to do? People think, for instance, that Doug Allen and I worked together. Doug and I never did PM Magazine together. Kim left to move into news full time, and then Nancy and I started at the same time in 1985. Hi, I'm Doug Allen. And I'm Nancy Byrne. And these two are friends of mine and are soon to become friends of yours as PM Magazine's new co-host. All right, now, are you ready to go? I think so. What about you, Doug? I'm excited. Glad to be here. Uh, okay, okay, now, it's very easy to do. Just intro the story and take it away. Okay, thank you, Susan. All right. PM Magazine was thrilling that I have been so fortunate in my life to have that opportunity. Live from Studio A, WGAL-TV Channel A presents 1230 Live. 12.30 Live was, to this day, one of the shows that I will always look back on and have such good memories of. It was an idea of our general manager. He thought, I want to do a half-hour live talk. And he had this crew from PM Magazine and this crew from that I was on from Susquehanna People, and he merged the crews together. And since I was the on-air host there and there was a male host for the other one, they put us together. And John Curley and I started 12.30 Live back in, I believe it was September of 1990. And it ran for ten and a half years, won a couple of Emmys, and it was an, an exciting, I mean, it was just an exciting show to be part of. It seems every TV station needs an offbeat personality, someone who can bring the lighter side to things, act a little crazy sometimes, do some stuff that'll make you scratch your head. Someone like my friend, Wendell Woodbury. As, as we traveled around the Susquehanna Valley, I, I noticed that there are lots of great stories out there. Uh, feature type stories, things going on that were good news, you know, and, and, and just great fun. I thought, well, these should be covered. Fortunately, they ha I had the opportunity to do what became known as Wendell's World. And uh, they gave me total freedom, which was really fantastic um, because there were so many things happening in the Susquehanna Valley that were worthy of coverage, fun events, uh, interesting people, you know, and uh, I thought, well, this is a great opportunity, and it was. People would send in ideas, and I said, that's great, we'll go do it. How would you describe Wendell Woodbury? If you have any information about this case, please keep it to yourself. Constantly dieting, or is it constantly eating? You see, he has this seafood diet. He sees food and he eats it. General, I got it first. You're going to be a private real fast. Why, something smells foul. Wendell Woodbury. You never know where he'll turn up next, but you can always find him weekdays at noon and 6, only on New Center 8. 
Yeah, I'm always amazed. Even today, people will come up to me and, and say, uh, gee, you know, you, you kind of got us through a tough time there. And I, I didn't realize I was doing anything. <laughs> I was just out there doing silly things, I thought, for the most part, and making that 6 o'clock deadline. But you don't realize sometimes what kind of an impact you have on people. Wendell was so much fun. You know, one of the first and to this day best uses of television is sports. And my hat's off to the early radio sportscasters who had to try and bring you into the game without you actually seeing it. Television changed all that. In fact, the first network program broadcast on WGAL was a prize fight between Jake LaMotta and Danny Nardico. Locally, WGAL viewers were treated to some of the best coverage of its time thanks to the pioneering efforts of one extraordinary man. Well, Jim, really, it's no time to talk to a coach just before the soccer game, and I know your team is going to be playing Reading High School in a very short time, but if you just take time after a few minutes, we'd like to know some things about soccer in the District 3 area this year. Dave Brandt was a genius, definitely a genius. The man was the dean of sportscasters, the only person I ever knew would memorize an entire show. Everybody thought Dave used a teleprompter. Dave would have a script there and he'd turn page by page by page, never really looked at it, he'd look right into the camera and do a whole sportscast. You'd often find him halfway between the newsroom and the studio, sitting on the steps, reading it over and memorizing it. There's, there's never been anybody like Dave, and there probably never will be again. I'm only the third main sports anchor the station's ever had. It was Dave Brandt and Jim Stone, now myself. And uh, Dave Brandt uh, was a legend. When I came here, that's uh, what so many viewers reminded me of. Uh, he had been here for so long and was just so uh, recognized in the community, in the area. We were groundbreakers in, in a lot of stuff and continue to be, you know, I think, because I think that's what kind of measures the, the strength of a station, that you're never satisfied with what you've kind of done in the past, but you're always looking for new ways and new ground to break and new, new things to do. And uh, I've always enjoyed uh, the more humorous, the more embarrassing moments, the magical moments, the, the funnier it is, the more likely I am to put it on. And that's the great thing about the station here. They have allowed me to really, uh, with Hostetler's Heroes, we do the Friday Fab Five. Here, you can do the, the high school, the local stuff, plus you can, uh, you can have some fun, show your personality. With the, the, the football Friday highlight show, we shoot 16 games a night, so it's a lot easier to spread your coverage around. Football Friday uh, came along in the, in the mid-90s, and it was something that Pat had been asking for for a long time, but we couldn't get the okay from NBC to preempt Jay Leno and The Tonight Show. Uh, so they finally gave us the okay and we got the thumbs up on that and that has uh, really revolutionized sports coverage in the area. It's become uh, appointment TV for high school sports on Friday nights. Uh, uh, high school football is, is such a, a big event here, not only for the players and coaches, but the, the fans, the bands, the cheerleaders. It's really just a big special event every Friday night. Uh, high School Playbook is something else. It's our website, which, de which is devoted entirely to high school sports. And this is a, a great clearinghouse for us to put all of our video on. If you miss the 11 o'clock uh, sportscast and you miss last night's games, you can go on to High School Playbook, download the highlights. Um, in many instances, we'll have raw highlights. We'll uh, give expanded highlights uh, beyond the 30 or 40 seconds that we showed the night before. Obviously, it's greatly improved, I think, our overall coverage of high school sports because now we're able to say, we're able to point them during the sports cast and say, if you want more on, you know, on this particular sport or just more on sports in general today, you know, we drive them to highschoolplaybook.com. WGAL has been the trendsetter from the moment it signed on. By its 35th birthday, WGAL had grown from 10 employees to 127. In 1985, WGAL was the first area station to broadcast in stereo. By 1990, Channel 8 was on the air 24-7. By 1995, WGAL was regularly bringing you the news via their own satellite truck. In 1997, Super Doppler 8 forever changed local weather coverage. In the late 90s, WGAL expanded their coverage to the web. And in 1999, on its 50th anniversary, Pulitzer Publishing sold WGAL to its current owners, Hearst Argyle. When we come back, you'll get to go behind the scenes with us and share in some of our experiences in being part of this celebration and tradition. Stay with us. <laughs> 